so I'm here to talk to you for a bit about open source fitness apps, namely Vegger, Peel, and how we're creating an exercise wiki. Before I get into that, uh, I'd first like to define what is actually a fitness app. Well, a fitness app, that's a broad term, uh, of a broad category of apps that covers a wide range of physical activities uh, for people with a wide range of expertise with varying demographics. But what brings all of these different uh, apps together is they all help you improve your physical fitness. Uh, unfortunately, what's also very common with these apps is that they're oftentimes proprietary, which means that you don't really have full control over your data uh, or over your habits, uh, over what's running on your, uh, on your computer or phone. And the problem with that is, um, let, let's walk through a scenario. Let's say you install this app, uh, you build your habits, you use it to track your walking or cycling, running every day. Uh, you build up a lot of data, you track your progress, but then suddenly it is shut down. And then what do you do? Well, you have to find a different app. You have to completely change your habits because you can't really use the app that you've been used to anymore. Um, you have to hope that the alternative uh, allows you to import data from the app. You also have to hope that this app will let you export your data. Um, so quite a change, but that's not the worst case scenario. Um, it can also happen that uh, your app can leak your data, which has happened uh, in uh, multiple cases. And there were real life risks associated with that also in uh, multiple cases. So we'd like to change that. Uh, and by we, I mean me. Uh, I'm the author of, uh, of Feel and also Roland Geider, who was supposed to originally give this presentation with me but couldn't make it today. Um, so we want to change this, and we want to make free and open source fitness apps the norm so that people wouldn't have to compromise uh, on their privacy or the control over what they run on their device or their habits just to be fit. So this is our goal. Uh, here's where we are now. We have uh, these two apps that you can use right now. Um, and there's also an API uh, that uh, anyone can use. Uh, it's a public API uh, associated with Vegard. Uh, I'll go into more detail about each of these. So uh, my app Feel uh, is a simple guided workout app. Uh, basically how it works is you open the app, you see a list of workouts, you choose a workout, and then this app guides you through, through that workout telling you how many seconds you have left before the break and then before the next exercise. You can choose from uh, some pre-made workouts or you can create your own. And uh, this app runs on Android as well as Linux. Uh, it's a Flutter app, so it's easy to port to, to other uh, platforms. And all your data is stored locally. Uh, then. Uh, the problem with this app is that for now, there's only 57 exercises that you can build uh, the workouts from. Uh, so while they, you do have images and descriptions, et cetera, for, for these exercises, there's not that many uh, workouts that you can actually build. Uh, but this is going to change, and I'll get back to this. Uh, then we have Vegger, which is uh, an online application that allows you to uh, create your own workout schedules, uh, create your own meal plans, and then helps you follow up on them. You can track uh, your, um, you can track all of these things via uh, this web interface, uh, and it's for more expert, more seasoned, uh, uh, more seasoned athletes. Uh, this is a web application, but you can uh, host your own server, so you still have control, and of course, it's all, it's all uh, fully open source. Uh, and there's also client applications for Android as well as for Linux via Flathub. Uh, there's also the Vegra API, which uh, 
Vagor pulls its information from. Uh, and this API gives you access to all of the things that you store in Vagor, including your uh, account details, meal logs, nutrition plans, uh, workout schedules, et cetera. Uh, but most importantly, it uh, also hosts the exercise wiki, uh, which is a very important uh, aspect, not just for the users of Vagor, but also for free and open source app developers, because suddenly it creates a centralized resource that developers can use uh, to get uh, exercise data, image, uh, exercise images, uh, exercise beta data, uh, such as which, um, uh, which muscles each exercise targets or wh what equipment you need to use for each exercise. Uh, and all of this is licensed uh, under the Creative Commons share like license. Uh, all of this is just like with Wikipedia, contributed by a range of people, and really it's, a, it's an invaluable resource uh, that one person couldn't create by themselves. The beauty of, of crowdsourcing is that um, everyone contributes a little bit, and then you build something huge that uh, no one person couldn't, could uh, easily create. And we see this as really uh, kind of a, a a launch pad for, for various uh, free and open source fitness apps that they can use because suddenly it becomes much easier to create your own app for your own niche um, that you target to uh, your uh, demographics of choice. Uh, so we're building this. Um, Vegar right now has 350 exercises in its uh, uh, in its exercise wiki. Uh, there's uh, more than 22,000 accounts uh, on there. Uh, it also has more than 2,300 GitHub stars, so it's relatively popular among developers as well. The wiki is relatively new, and there's some bugs being sorted out, so this uh, exercise number is, is sure to grow in the future. Uh, but we still, haven't, uh, we still haven't reached our goal of making free and open source uh, fitness apps the norm. So how do we get there? Well, uh, we need you. We need the community to uh, contribute exercises uh, to help us build apps uh, and more. There's a number of ways you can contribute. Uh, I've um, mentioned the wiki. You can uh, go on uh, vegar.de today and contribute an exercise or contribute changes to an existing exercise that's on there. Uh, you could add more information. You can uh, revise the steps if they're not correct or there's not enough information. Uh, you can upload images. I would hold off on uploading images for now unless you have public domain uh, images that you can freely share because um, there's, uh, and this is still being worked on, um, there's uh, missing uh, functionality for specifying licensing. Uh, so unless you have public domain images, don't upload images yet, but maybe save them to a folder for uploading uh, at a later date. Uh, speaking of images, uh, of photos, uh, in my experience, a lot of people don't tend to like taking photos of themselves and uh, publishing them online for people to use and see. Uh, and this is one of the reasons why Feel uses this uh, low poly look, um, this triangulated look. Uh, and what you can do if you're feeling shy about uh, submitting your own photos is uh, download this app called Floss Triangulator. It's a Java app uh, that you can use. It's on FlatHub, but you can also use it on other platforms, of course. Uh, and you can... Um, uh, Add your image, uh, create a low poly version like this, which uh, you can customize where, where the points are so that it you know, looks good and so that it's uh, anonymous enough to your liking. And, um, and then you can export the SVG and, uh, and submit that so that uh, you know, your face is obscured enough, you don't have to feel shy, but you can still contribute to this, uh, this open source wiki of, uh, of uh, exercises that we have. And then besides uh, these ways of contributing, there's also the standard ways uh, you can develop. Uh, you can help with development of these two apps, or you can develop your own app. 
uh, perhaps integrating some of or all of Beggar's API, um, including this exercise wiki. You can help us translate. Uh, you can translate via WebLate, or you can translate exercises via the Beggar wiki. You can help design, you can help test, and of course, you can spread the word, share on any social media that you happen to use. So I hope you're as motivated about making the uh, world of free and open source fitness apps happen. Uh, if you are, uh, you can visit these, these links. Uh, there's also under these links, uh, links to chat with the community. Uh, so you can talk to us there. And uh, I think we have a, a little bit of time for questions. Yes. Do you have support or maybe community integrations to like uh, business devices like you know Fitbits and you know Android watches that kind of thing? Right. So so this is uh, so the question was if uh, we can integrate with uh, hardware such as uh, smartwatches, uh, fitness uh, trackers uh, of all kinds, uh, and uh, this is maybe in the road uh, on the roadmap. Uh, right now we're focusing on more core stuff uh, such as this wiki. Uh, but I'm sure that eventually uh, there will be support. You can, if you'd like, you can help uh, uh, us implement this. Uh, and um, potentially, you know, if there's more uh, free open source apps, because there are some open source apps already that do have this uh, integration, um, mostly on F-Droid, um, perhaps we could uh, collaborate with them as well. Yes. Right. Uh, so uh, the question was, uh, how do we how do we get uh, people to how do we get uh, people to use these free and open source applications so that they become the norm? Um, and uh, I think the answer here is, you know, right now if you look at the landscape of uh, fitness apps in general, uh, there's a ton of uh, fitness apps, but no clear ones that people would recommend. And I think that creates an entry point for free and open source software uh, because you know, apps come and go, you know, apps are being canceled all the time, there's mergers, there's redesigns, there's all sorts of things, and there's no one clear app to use. And I think uh, the advantage that the free and open source world has here is uh, that really you can um, focus uh, on uh, building apps for a specific use case and these apps then, because they're open source, even if the maintain, original maintainer leaves, can then be maintained if they're useful to people. And also we can have joint efforts like the, this uh, exercise wiki that everyone can use. So really, I think we can grow communities in a much uh, more um, efficacious way than, uh, than <coughs> closed source projects can, just because we share a lot of things uh, among various open source projects. Any more questions? Yes? One thing we're interested in for fitness and uses is that Garmin will only not extend APIUs to commercial entities. Right. Is it worth registering one of these as commercial for purposes of getting the Garmin API? Uh, so the question was whether uh, we can. Um, so the question was Garmin currently uh, provides uh, access to its API only to commercial entities. Uh, and uh, it's a question of whether uh, it's worth it to uh, create a commercial entity to be able to, to access uh, this API. And um, I, I would just say that I personally haven't specifically thought about Garmin. Uh, maybe, again, this is something worth uh, visiting in the future. Um, it's also a question of whether it might not be better to just integrate with um, some resource that already plugs into the Garmin API so that you'd have your data from Garmin somewhere in some, you know, in uh, some centralized piece of software. I know, for example, Google uh, has its due tracker that like amasses all sorts of uh, fitness data. 
uh, from everywhere and you can plug into it. Uh, so, but it's something that we'll have to look into going to the future. Maybe, you know, we can go the other way around, convince Garmin to take images. Yes. Without yeah, yeah. Right? yeah, we can potentially convince people, uh, Garmin, to, to, uh, yeah, to open it up. Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Thanks.